Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are taking a look at the Lego Avatar Neytiri and Thanator vs AMP Suit Quartz set, a long name I know, set number 75571. We've got 560 pieces with it, two minifigures. Let's go ahead and take a look at those figures right now. Firstly here we have Neytiri. This is the final battle Neytiri from the third act of the first Avatar movie. As you can see she has those nice Navi dots that all of the Navi have on their body both on the faces and on the torsos and their backs. She's got a different torso from the other ones found in the sets, as well as an exclusive face print from my understanding. Her accessory is just a bow and arrow. And here's just a look at that figure with the hair and accessory removed. The other figure included in the set is Colonel Miles Quaritch, and if you're familiar with this character from the movies, would know has some of the most hilarious lines of dialogue throughout the entire two movies, really. Nothing's over while I'm breathing. Shut your pie hole. I know you're all asking yourselves the same question. Why so blue? You are not in Kansas anymore. You are on Pandora. You get soft. Pandora will sh you out dead with zero more. But this figure is kind of a big deal for a lot of people, being that it's our first real military looking figure. He's got that army green, which is kind of that sand green color from Lego, with that tactical camouflage look attached to it. And he's got Zane's hair from Ninjago as well. Here's just a closer look at that face print with the hair removed. It's got that nice scarring on the side that you've seen in the movie. So this is a pretty cool print. Here we figure. have a closer look at the Thanator itself. And I think it looks pretty good. It looks a little less mechanical than I was actually expecting from pictures because I definitely feared with these tiles right here specifically, these two by two round tiles, this might be a super robotic looking build, but I think mostly this works. We'll get into what doesn't work, what does work, but overall it's a fair build. The legs have six legs total and the first two are on this ball joint right here that pops off just like that and that's what that looks like there and then that just attaches right there. As you can see, that other leg came off there, but it's pretty easy to fix. These legs here are on this type of uh, clip connection as well as the feet on all of the legs, but the actual legs here are on these clickety joint pieces. So that's how you get that six leg effect right there. The tail is just attached with this clip right here with a little spike at the end of it. And unlike the front leg, the back legs are attached with a pin connection just like that. And they go on just like that. The head itself is new for this set and also on a ball joint. So it just has a nice range of motion to it like that. And the mouth opens as well. Unlike the other avatar creatures, this one does not have a super satisfying click sound though when you move the mouth around. And they of course give you a second to mount Nateri. She just clips on with two studs on the bottom of the feet. Here is the AMP suit itself. This actually looks really cool and it's kind of iconic at this point for Avatar. This is definitely a really recognizable mech I feel like for a lot of people so it's cool to see it recreated in Lego form. Back when these initial Avatar sets were first revealed this was actually the one I wanted the second most second only to the Tree of Souls of course but I think it came out nicely minus one thing we'll get into in just a little bit. The rest of the mech is complete with several little areas filled with greebling details similar to what you'd see in Star Wars with a nice use of stickers to get some graphics on there that probably would not be able to be achieved with just bricks. Going around all sorts of places on the model, whether it be the legs, the feet, this is really, really emphasized and stamped with detail throughout and I really appreciate that because you usually don't see such detail at the scale. We get a sticker in the cockpit section for the actual heads-up display as well as some meters printed on pieces below and the actual area and process of getting Quaritch in there is really easy to just snap him in. He comes complete with a machete like the one we see in the movie and the fingers are movable as such. Each hand includes a clip for the accessories that you get in the actual set and the feet are on ball joints just as you might expect allowing a pretty significant range of motion across the model. The other accessory included with the AMP suit itself is actually this blade that never appears in the movie and something weird might be going on here if you have seen the short on my channel. I'll just let it speak for itself. All right guys, so you're never gonna believe this. I was building this right here and the instruction manual calls for five of these right? It's definitely supposed to be in this bag. This is bag number three. And I know it wouldn't be anywhere else 
in the set because, like I said, it's supposed to have five. So all five are being used by this step right here. It's definitely not in the other bag. So they actually missed the piece. So the piece is just flat out missing. It would go there. So that's super annoying. But on top of that, this set included Gore's head from Thor Love and Thunder is in my set. Gore. I got off the phone with the Lego customer service and the girl couldn't even believe it. So yeah, nice to see that they gave me Gore's head from Thor Love and Thunder, but not the blade piece I need to actually complete the set. Lego opted to have this in place of the giant machine gun that appears in the actual film. Don't ask me how sawing people in half, sawing flesh with this is cool, but shooting them in a very quick and easy death is not. And as to be expected with all of the Avatar sets really across both waves, this set also includes a large piece of terrain which is supposed to represent the land of Pandora, but I can't say that this is particularly my favorite piece of terrain throughout the entire set. As far as the ones I've built so far, this is definitely my least favorite as the randomness of some of the colors almost teeters the territory of ugly. Okay, so for what's included in this set at $45, I can't help but feel like this set should have been about five bucks less, maybe even at 35 if you still wanted to go within LEGO's new $5 extra price point, which we didn't really see before this wave. But this is the new pricing system for LEGO now. I think the two exclusive minifigures included in this set are definitely very good minifigures, especially Quaritch. If you're very familiar with these Navi figures already, you might get a little bored of them. Whatever the case may be, he's one of four of the original Lego minifigures actually included in the sets. The rest are these updated Navi figures with the longer arms and longer legs. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of this mech here for Quaritch. I really like the design of it just in the movie and I thought it translated really nicely to this set here today. But my review ultimately boils down to my personal experience with the set. And while I know that this won't be the case, hopefully for everyone else, it was the case for me. There was a missing piece in my set and a set and a piece included from a totally different theme, which is inexcusable, especially with a hobby as expensive as Lego. For that reason alone, I have to knock the rating down for this set to reflect that. This one is going to get a B from me. I am not a huge fan of the terrain section, as I mentioned, but I really like how the mech came out and the Thanator is actually surprisingly better in person than from the pictures. Anyway, that's all I've got. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot, guys, and please like the video if you have not already. I'll see you later.